Hello, I'm Christopher, a research software engineer with Research Software Workshops, and it's a very warm welcome to part 5 of Beginning R. So the materials at chriswoods.com slash beginning R, and we're now working through the conditionals page, which you can see here. Now we saw that loops were one way of changing the default kind of top to bottom reading of our scripts. Now loops are an example of control flow statements. Another very useful sort of control flow statement is the conditional. This, rather than allowing you to repeat different parts of the program, gives you the ability to skip parts depending on certain conditions. Now the simplest place to start is just the if statement. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete or close loop.r and I'm going to create a new R script here. I'm going to call this if.r. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an R script where I'm going to execute different bits of code depending on a condition. So first let's create a number. So we're going to set this equal to 128. And then what we're going to say is if the number is greater than 100, then we're going to execute the code print paste my number is large. Else, if my number is less than 10, we're going to print paste my number is oh, so less than zero, I should say. Then my number is negative. Else, print paste my number is not large. Okay, so I'm going to explain how this works in a sec. So first I'm going to now just run this script. So R script and then if.r and we'll see what is printed. So before I press return, just have a think about which, what do you think will be printed to the screen? And then we'll see if it is what you expect. Okay, so we get 128 is large. I hope that's what you expect. So this basically brings us to our first exercise. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to copy this script into your own if.r and then change my number to a number less than 100 and rerun the program. What does the program, what does the script print? Again, please press pause and when you come back, I'll give you the answer. Okay, you've unpaused now, so I assume you're ready for the answer. So let's play around with some different numbers that we put in here. So let's put in a number which is like less than 100. So let's put in 50. And what's it going to print now? Let's have a look. Okay, we've got 50 is not large. It's executed this line. Let's put in a negative number now. And what are we going to print at this point? There we are. Negative 10 is negative. So what we've got here is basically a simple if, else if, and if uh, statement structure. So if is a special command. It means we're starting a new if block. And we start it with if to, to designate the start. And it will basically execute the code that's contained within these curly brackets if a condition is true. Now the condition is what we write in, this, in these round brackets. A condition is something which returns true or false. So in this case we're saying, is my number greater than 100? So if I return this now to its first value, so we set my number to 128, then if 128 is greater than 100, that is true. That means we now execute all of the code which is within these curly brackets. So we print to the screen, my number is large. And we can see that is what we get. Now if this condition is not true, so let's change this number to say negative 20, what happens next is the program will then look at the next condition, which is in the else if. So this is saying, if this condition is not true, else if this condition is true. So is my number less than zero? If this condition is true, then we execute the code within these curly brackets. And that's why we print, my number is negative. And so when we have a number which is negative 20, well, negative 20 is not more than 100, but it is less than zero. So it does print negative 20 is negative. Now, if this next condition is not true, so let's say I put in the number here 34, we then move down to the else block. The else block is what we execute if none of the conditions above are true. In this case, we're executing print paste my number is not large. 
So when we use 34, well, 34 is not greater than 100. It is not less than zero. So that means we're going to execute this code, which is the print paste. 34 is not large. Now in an if block, you have to include the if section. So this part here is required if you're going to have an if block. However, the else if and the else, those are optional. So we could have just had this part in. And then in this case, nothing is printed because this code is not executed because my number is not more than 100. So what I'd like you to do, actually, I'm now taking you through these first parts. What I wanted to mention was basically booleans. So I've been saying booleans are conditions, they're true or false values. We actually have different types of conditionals that we can place in, so different conditional expressions. So, so far we've been using my number is more than 100. Well, we can do any form of condition. So basically that was 128 is more than 100, as an example. If we now run this, we can see it's printing true. I'll just move this out of the way so it's not confusing us. Now we can actually put in, if this condition was not true, so is 128 more than 134, it returns false. But we have available to us, we can use greater than, greater than equal to, less than, and less than and equal to. We can also use this to mean, are they actually equal to each other? And then we have this to mean, are they not equal to each other? So in this case, is 128 equal? to 128? The answer is true. Is 128 not, e not equal to 128? The answer is false. And so you can play with different conditionals to get different parts and those conditionals will go into your if statement. Now this now brings us to the exercise. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take if.r if and I'd like you to copy in effectively this statement here. So I'm going to copy this back in just so we have it ready for us. And I'd like you to copy this in and I'd like you to play around with different conditionals and different values of my number so that you can make sure you're very happy how the if statement is working. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to do that so press pause to pause me and then when you come back I'll show you the answer. Okay you've now unpaused so I assume you're now ready for the answer. So let's have a go with some different values and different conditions. So we have available, let's have a play here. So we have my number is 128. Let's do my number is less than 100 rather than more than 100. And indeed, I'll move these other else ifs and else array. So is that going to work? No, nope. 128 is not less than 100. So let's now put in 34. Is 34 less than 100? Yes, it is. Now we can try, um, let's try another one. Let's have um, equals to. So is my number equal to 100? Is my 34 equal to 100? No, so we don't execute it. But if 34, if my number was equal to 100, it is executed. We can try now not equals to. So let's do a not equals to. Is my number not equal to 100? No, it's not, that is false. So this line is not executed. But anything else in here, which is not equal to 100, so let's try 101. 101 is not equal to 100, so this is true. So we do execute the lines of code in this block. As before, when used if statements, we can put as many lines of code as we want in here. So I'm going to put a little here I am as well. And you can see that when we run this, both of those lines are executed, but they are only executed if this condition here is true. So, as I said, we've seen that the body of the if statement will only run if the condition is true. Now we've used else and else if, and just to sort of make sure we're very happy with those, else is what we run if the condition is not true. So if this particular statement is not run, if we add an else, then something else will run. I'm just going to print here, else this will run. And if we now run this script, in this case, we ran this because my number is not equal to 100 and we did not run the else block. Now if we set this equal to 100 and now run this, we see that this statement is false. 100 is not not equal to 100. 
and so this condition is not passed and so we drop down to the else block and we run this block here. And then as I said if we wanted to we can optionally as well as having an else block also have else if blocks. So we can say else if my number equals 20 print this is 20 as an example. Here we have here and now in this case we're going to say is 100 not equal, not equal to 100? That's false, we don't run this. Is 100 equal to 20? No it's not, hence we run the else block and that's why when we run this script we see, sorry, running if.var we see else this will run. Now if I change this to 20, 20 not equal to 100 in this case that will execute the first line because 20 is large and when we've executed this we do not then move through the other conditions so notice that we leave, we stop on the first condition. If we just change this top condition let's make this to more than 100. So we say is 20 more than 100? Well that's going to be false. Is 20 equal to 20? Yes it's true hence we now get here the yes 20 is 20. So this now has taken you through looking at else and looking at else if. So we have this final exercise at the bottom of the if conditionals block where I'd like you to edit if.py to loop over the numbers from 0 to 9 and to print a message for each. Now what you should do is print one message if the number is greater than 5, another message if it is less than 5, and otherwise you should print that the number is equal to 5. Now remember you can use the seek function to help you loop over the numbers and you can actually do this with only one if, one else if, and one else. Although this is programming, you can use any answer you wish. There is no one single right or wrong answer. So press pause, and when you come back, I'll show you the answer. Okay, you've unpaused now, so I'm assuming you're ready for me to give you the answer. So let's start off by creating the loop itself. So first we're gonna use seek to loop over the numbers from one to 10. So remember we have four, because that's our looping for statement i in seek to build a sequence from 1 to 10 and now that will loop over. Now we're going to put our if conditional in here so we have if i is less than 5 we're going to print now paste i is less than 5. I'll put a little full stop on the end there that's nice. Now we can, that would execute when i is less than 5. We now want something to execute when i is greater than 5, so we'll do that with else if i is greater than 5. Print paste i is greater than 5. And then we want something to execute if i is not less than 5 and i is not greater than 5, but execute in all other circumstances. That will be our else, so we now say else in this case i can only be 5, so we'll say print paste i is equal to 5. And that should be it. So if we now run this script, our script if.r, we can see we've got 1 is less than 5, 2 is less than 5, 3 is less than 5, 4 is less than 5, and 5 is, so and 4 is less than 5 because they have all executed this block. Then we have 5 is equal to 5 because neither this condition was true nor this condition was true, so we executed the else block. And then finally we have 6 is greater than 5, 7 is greater than 5, 8 is greater than 5, 9 is greater than 5, and 10 is greater than 5, which you can see is because this block was false, but this block was true, and so we executed this line. And that is the answer to this section, to that exercise. Now that was the last exercise in the conditionals block, so we've now finished part 5, and so come back for part 6, which will look at dictionaries, and I look forward to seeing you there.